when we first saw him, he was, he looked like somebody who had been asphyxiated, meaning that somebody who had a crushing injury to his chest and it didn't allow him to breathe. The boy's been going deer hunting me since they were two years old, so they go everywhere with me. I was getting ready for a deer hunt, and so we're scouting, and it was me, my brother-in-law, and Cooper, and we were about eight miles deep, just driving slow in a Ranger, and it's just an off-world vehicle type deal. Cooper was not buckled up. Cooper was sitting in between us in the front seat. We go roughly 15 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour when we're driving this thing. Made a three-point turn, and um, the Ranger fell off the rock, and then it started to tip, and then it rolled on top of him. I mean, it seemed like he was under that for about 10 minutes, but really it's probably about 45 seconds to a minute of him yelling, you know, Daddy, get this off, and I couldn't do it. And that, you know, that was a hard thing to do to the stomach is not being able to, to help your son. But uh, after a minute, um, me and him just got some strength, and we lifted it off, and then I held it up off of him. And... and then as I held it off of him, Connell uh, swiped him out and pulled him out. My arm hurted very bad, and, and I wanted to go to sleep. It took me probably 30, 40 minutes to hike him out, and... My arms got so fatigued, I'd have to sit down with him in my lap, and we'd sit there and cry together. And then I'd pick him back up, and in your mind, you're spinning, you know? You just, you just like, oh my God, what's gonna happen to him? When they would sit there and, you know, have to take a break, and they would be sitting there crying, Cooper would say to him, like, it's okay, Daddy, don't cry. He'd reach up, grab my face, be like, Daddy, I love you, and I'm like, jeez. Oh, He's like, thank you for taking me hunting. He had a lot of guilt, number one, for taking him, which, is a great thing. I love I, I love that my kids get that experience. Not that many kids have a dad that is so involved and loves to take to take them. The wreck occurred at 7.30 in the morning and we were in route for Phoenix Children's by nine o'clock in the morning. I see you know a room with bright lights and people running around and stuff. She says, okay, I just wanna prepare you. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people in and out. And she said, but this is normal for a trauma situation. I said, trauma? This isn't a trauma. Or my son has a broken arm and a leg and probably a broken rib. And she said, oh no, honey, this is a trauma. We were in the area where, where there was a bunch of doctors and, and stuff, and they were doing a lot of stuff to me. Once we assessed that he was, that he was able to breathe and, and all the, the initial evaluation, and we got the CAT scans, we actually also found out he had a, he had a shattered spleen. After 24 hours, the bleeding stopped and, and actually his, his uh, blood count stabilized. And that first day and a half, two days was very, uh, it was like thinking the worst and then in a, in a blink of an eye, he's, he's like, oh my God, he's gonna, be, he's gonna be good. I just felt like the doctors and the nurses were so on top of things and the fact that they never like wheeled him away from us. We were in there with him every step of the way. I've been a firefighter for four years now. I got to experience every step and it's flawless. It truly is. From the, from the police to the, to the medics and the chopper and to, to the final product of Phoenix Children's. And that's my final product is, uh, is this awesome hospital that was just awesome.